social symbol of shame. This barbaric practice of crucifixion, humiliating, agonizing, a graphic display of punishment reserved for the worst of offenders. The cross was the epitome of scorn and rejection. In the sacred scriptures, the gospel writers give account of one crucifixion that changed everything. Somehow on that day, in a glorious twist of irony, this brutal practice of crucifixion became the source of eternal hope. Through his sacrifice, Jesus didn't just change historic perception of the cross. He turned it on its head. From scandal to grace, from condemned to forgiven, from prisoner to pardoned, What once was seen as the ultimate form of humiliation has become the ultimate display of amazing love. Today we remember what Jesus accomplished through the cross. We take hope in his resurrection. We celebrate his victory over death and the grave forever. Because he lives.
good job. It was that door I built. That's what done it. Without that door, he couldn't have preached it. Amen. It is time to start service tonight. Amen. We're, we're excited that you're here. Question is, are you excited to be here? Amen. Everybody point over at Brother Tim and say, shame on you. <laughs> Go shame. ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. Shame, shame. All right. It's a Walmart's fault. Yeah. He, <laughs> yeah. There you go. I told you I'd get you. But anyway, <clears throat> no, nah, just kidding. Him. He called me an old man. I'm, that's all right. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. He'll be there soon. But, uh, well, we're going to just let God do what God does best, right? Amen. How many going to let God do that? Yeah. Well, only the way that's going to happen is for us to put self out of the way and say, God, we're here tonight for the next ever how long it is. Used to, in Pentecost, we didn't worry about a clock. Uh, years ago, there was a, a lady evangelist by the name of Joyce Porterfield. Yeah. And she said there was two things a church didn't need, a clock and a bathroom. <laughs> what she said. Since that, since those two things have been brought in the house of God, people have been coming and going ever since. <laughs> Amen. So I guess that's true. But anyway, we got both in the building. It's sad to say, but we want to try to keep you inside tonight. So we're gonna we're gonna do our best to just uh, let God be God and and just have a good time in the Lord and uh, just. just um, just, man, just open up our hearts and let the Lord just flood. Uh, how many knows that tomorrow, if God gives us to tomorrow, we could face some things that may not be just real pleasant? Yeah. Anybody know that? You know what tomorrow is, don't you? It's Monday. Amen. And just in case you didn't know that. But uh, a lot of times Monday are harder than any other day. And, uh, but... Uh, that's why we come to church on Sundays. Let it rain, Lord. We come to get filled up and prepared and uh, just uh, equipped for whatever the Lord has for us tomorrow. God may give us an opportunity tomorrow to be a witness and a light to shine to somebody. And God, I want to have enough tonight to help me be prepared for tomorrow, whatever that case may be. Let's go to God in prayer. Let's invite him in a service. Father, we come to you tonight. We're thankful for the opportunity we have to serve you and to worship you. We ask God to just meet our needs, God. We ask God to just speak to us, touch us, God, minister to us. And God, I pray, Lord, that you would just work in our lives, God. Let everything be done, be done as pleasing unto you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Do as you did this morning. Open your phone. Amen. Share it. Um, do whatever you do. I don't know what you do. And then turn your wife off so we don't have glitches in our service tonight. I think we got through service pretty good this morning. So uh, let's, let's make sure those that are not able to come to the house of God can receive that. Amen. We do have some that depend on it highly. Somebody make sure to listen to the phone, make sure that we have volume and all that kind of stuff. Amen. We do. So, all right. Sounds good. Let's worship God. Amen. Nothing but the blood.
sing Send the Light. We need the light to shine, don't we? Amen. He tells us to be the light. Amen. Let the light so shine that others may see the way. Amen. And uh, I, I can tell you, amen, we need to be the lights of Christ. Amen. We really, really, really ought to be the lights of Christ. And sometimes that's hard. In the world that we live in, sometimes it's, it's, it's difficult. I found myself in a debate the other day. I didn't want to be in a debate. I didn't ask to be in a debate. I didn't desire to be in the debate, but I found myself in the middle of a debate. Anybody ever been there? I, I, was, I was just doing what I thought I was supposed to be doing, but I found myself in the middle of this, this debate from a guy that was trying to make his wrongdoings right. He was trying to justify his wrongdoings. And, um, <clears throat> boy, just don't line up with the Word of God. And uh, I told him, I said, man, the last thing I want to do is come over here to your place and cause you trouble. But according to the word of God, God called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. He tells that the light and darkness don't intertwine. It don't go together. And uh, matter of fact, uh, light makes the darkness flee. But anyway, I said, the Bible taught us to come out from you among them. Be ye therefore separate, a separated people. Well, needless to say, that went about as far as I could have thrown him. But anyway, I tried. <clears throat> hey, man. So sometimes you just got to cut your losses and go to the house. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let the word do what it's supposed to do. All you're supposed to do is share the word and let the word do what it's supposed to do. And um, he, may, he, he told me that he's going to come visit with us. So I hope he does. I hope he does. Then it'll be Brother Dwayne's fault. Problem, not mine. 
And no, nah, just kidding. Amen. We're going to come to you. We're going to come to you for your evening offering. We want you to give us giving unto the Lord. Listen, listen, uh, we, we're taking up an offering to, um, uh, not, not tonight, but we're taking up offering to send our pastors, uh, Dwayne, Sister Christy, and Kaylee, and Brayson, and Malachi, to camp meeting. And uh, we set a target goal of probably around $1,000 for them to go and rent a room and, and have have enough east, eats, at least for Christy and the kids. And uh, Dwayne's going to fast that week. And, uh, but, uh, <clears throat> oh, maybe he ain't. Look, he's giving me, he ain't planning on doing that. So, but I think we're about $400 away and uh, from having that met. So we just, we just got one. One more Sunday? I think so. I think we just have one more Sunday. And so this week, be praying on how God can speak to your heart. And let's make this happen. Let's, let's send our pastors. Actually, the first is on a Sunday. So we have two we Sundays. We have two Sundays. All right. So, so you got two Sundays to break in your, your penny bank and take it and get it cashed in and bring it and give it to the pastor to go get fed. Amen, and because uh, I promise you, he'll come back fired up and uh, ready for something special. Amen. But tonight, we're going to take up offering. Our offering tonight goes to meet the needs of the church. How many know that the church has needs? Amen. The church has needs, and uh, so that's that's what our our uh, offering is tonight. So we want you to give us given unto the Lord, and God bless you for your giving, and uh, I know that he will. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Tony, would you bless our offering tonight, buddy? For just a minute, we got a prayer need that has come to us over our Facebook uh, live. And a uh, gentleman sent in a prayer need. His sister's in the hospital now. Um, and uh, they're, they're saying that she's probably going to die real soon and uh, can't because of cancer. And he's asking for immediate prayer. And um, so, Charles White, if you're, if you're watching us, we want to pray for you. Amen. Pray for your family, that God would touch and meet this need. Can we do that today? Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we come to you right now, God, asking God that you'd meet this need. There is no limit, God, to time and space. God, you're able to go where we can't go, and you're able to do what we can't do. And, God, we're asking, God, that you would do that tonight. God, I pray that, God, that you would touch this sister. God, that you'd minister to her, God. God, only you, God, help the control of life and death God you have that control and Father we're asking God that you would just minister God according to your plan and your will but God I'm asking for your undergirding God of every individual God God I'm praying God that you would minister and touch lift and encourage strengthen and help Father we surrender it to you tonight God because we know that you're faithful and God we, we bind together our faith believing God God, that you're able, you're more than able to do exceedingly abundantly above that that we ask or think according to that power that works within us. 
In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Just remain standing. Let's worship the Lord a little bit this morning, tonight. Amen. Well, I'm reminded tonight of who we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Sometimes we forget the power we have through the blood of the Lamb. He says we're overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen. <clears throat> and um, before we get started tonight, I want to just testify, and it may have been testified of this morning, but... Uh, Last night, I think it was last night, I'm not sure, it might have been the night before, but uh, a bit of spiritual warfare walked into the house, and we felt the presence of that being trying to come in and, and um, tear down and cause harm, and it wasn't long after that I got a text from my sister saying, please pray, I feel dizzy, I feel weird, I've never felt this way before. We begin to bombard heaven. And as we begin to bombard heaven, that spirit of heaviness began to lift and the spirit of God began to come into the room. And a humbleness came up over me that thought, God, why am I even worthy of you to listen to my call? Why am I worthy? But he sent his son to die for us. And I think tonight we need to remember who we are. So whatever we're facing tonight, whatever, I don't know, I wasn't here this morning, but I watched the, the word and it was wonderful. Whatever you're facing, whatever you carried with you into this building tonight, because I know that as soon as you left this morning, the devil's going to try to do, that's his job. We're not giving him glory or praise for that. But the devil tried to get you down and I feel it in this place tonight. And it may be just tiredness, but I want you to remember who you are by the blood of the Lamb. Who you are because God went to, or Jesus went to the cross and died for you. He said we are conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Amen. And he said the light drives out the darkness. So I want you to raise up that spiritual warrior in you tonight and let's praise the Lord. As the Spirit was moving over the
when you really make a hard time When you feel the room You're here and I know you are moving I'm here and I know you will feel me Calm down, spirit, when you really make a hard time When you feel the room You're here and I know you
The wind started violently blowing But he was asleep in the stern They said, does he not care that we perish? We're frightened and we're so afraid But see, Jesus arose when they called him and said to them, where is your faith? Because you prayed all night. Because you held on with all your might. Child, don't cry. I've won the master. And he to know that any time you call upon the Lord, hallelujah, he hears your cries. Hallelujah. It blesses my heart, number one, to have Sister Christy with us tonight, following the leading of the Holy Spirit, when she said, you can't expect nothing from God because nothing is impossible for God. When you call upon his name, he promises that he will see you through. Hallelujah. He didn't promise that we wouldn't go through storms or hardship, 
But he did promise he would never leave us nor forsake us. But he would go with us even to the ends of the earth. Can somebody just slip your hand up right there and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you never left me behind. Thank you, Lord, that you never gave up on me. Thank you, Lord, that you held, you stay close to me. Hallelujah. Ain't you glad that your heavenly father stays close to you? God is so good. He's so good. It's so good to be back in the house of the Lord and being in his presence and a being amongst brothers and sisters. Amen. And I, 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 I enjoyed this morning. I hope you enjoyed this morning. Um, I, I didn't enjoy this morning because I was preaching, even though I was having fun preaching it. Amen. I enjoyed this morning because we was amongst uh, people that were just here for one reason, one reason only, and that was to worship the Heavenly Father. And I believe that when we come in that mindset as one, that when we come in the mindset that we want to be in the presence of the Lord, the Bible says that he shows up in the midst of it. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, church, but I want to have a praise mindset all the days of my life. I want to have a praise mindset on my heart continually because I know that in the Bible it says that he He dwells, he, he inhabits the praise of his people. Amen. And so so I believe there is an importance to have a praise mindset. There is an importance to have a praise on your heart continually because that's when you start winning battles is when you start magnifying the Lord. Amen. I want to talk about tonight the truth of the weapon of praise. How many knows that praise is your weapon? Praise is a weapon. And when we begin to praise the Lord, hallelujah, things begin to take place. When we begin to praise the Lord, hallelujah, it doesn't matter where you're at, hallelujah, whatever situation or circumstance that you're going Going through. Uh, I love this. When you begin to praise the Lord, uh, it doesn't matter how weak you feel or are in that moment. There's something about when you praise the Lord uh, that the joy of the Lord begins to bubble up. And what does the word say about joy? The joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. Can we just give God a hand clap of praise in this place tonight? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're going to go to Judges chapter 7, verses 8 through 22. Judges chapter 7, verses 8 through 22. Hallelujah. If you want to go with me there, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know this story very well. I don't know that I'm going to read all the way through it because the Holy Spirit's directing me in a different way. But Judges chapter 7, 8 through 22 says, So the people took victuals or, or, or uh, uh, um, um, pictures or vessels in their hand and their trumpets. And he sent all the rest of Israel, every man unto his tent, and retained those 300. And the host of Midian was beneath him in the valley. I want you to notice that right there. So the, here the, here Gideon and the 300 are in the high place. They're, they're on, they're on the level ground. And the people, the Midians, their enemy is below them. How do many knows that the enemy is under your feet? Come on, somebody say amen. The enemy is under your feet. And when you listen to the voice of God, the enemy is defeated. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But anyway, the enemy was beneath him in the valley. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered into thine hand. But if thou fear to go down, go there, thou and uh, with uh, Pharaoh, 
uh, thy servant down to the host, and thou shalt hear what they say, and afterwards shall thine hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then he then went he down with uh, his friend, his servant, unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. Y'all know the story that when they got down there, they got behind um, one of their tents and they started talking about a dream that the Lord had given to them. And they even started describing what the dream meant. And the enemy themselves started uh, talking about how the Lord was going to uh, uh, appre- apprehend them and de- conquer them. Uh, so with God blessed him. And it was when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof that he worshipped, come on somebody, and returned into the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord have delivered it into your hand, the host of Midian. And he divided the 300 men into their companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand, and with empty pictures and lamps within the pictures. And he said unto them, Look on me and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I I do so shall you do when I blow with a trumpet I and all that are with me then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp and say the Lord uh, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon so Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came out the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch and they took or, or they had but newly set the watch and they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hands and the three companies blew their trumpets and break the pitchers that were in the that held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in the right hands to blow with all and they cried the sword of the Lord and of Gideon and they stood every man in his place round about the camp and all the hosts ran and cried and fled and the 300 blew the trumpets and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow even throughout all the hosts. God I thank you Lord that you fight for us. You go before us Lord. I thank you God that you inhabit the praise of your people God. You dwell in Zion Lord. You dwell amongst your people. Lord let your people always lift their voice God in praise knowing that you dwell amongst us God as we lift our voices Lord let us realize that the enemies are shaken because we worship not upon our idle words but God we worship the name of Jesus Christ and at his name the demons tremble God we will I prophesy will move forward in praise God and watch the enemy camps fall in the name of Jesus open up our hearts open up our ears that we may receive your word in the name of Jesus we pray if you agree with me won't you lift a big amen and let's continue on we see this great story hallelujah that uh, is preached over and over and over is taught in children's schools uh, or our children's church uh, we we see this story that we've heard of uh, probably all, all our lives, those that have uh, grown in the church uh, about Gideon. We know that Gideon was a man who was not sure of what God had told him he was going to do. When God called him as a soldier, uh, Gideon said, you've mistaken. You're supposed to call on my brothers. But God said, I have not mistaken. Brother Scotty, aren't you glad that God has not mistaken? He knew you even before 
before the foundations of the earth. Uh, he knew that you was going to have a heart uh, of praise. Uh, he knew you, hallelujah, and called you uh, to prophesy the good news of Jesus Christ uh, before the foundations of the earth. Uh, he's called you and chosen you uh, and he's calling you out tonight saying, uh, lift up thy voice, uh, son of the living God. Uh, lift up thy voice, daughter of the living God uh, and sing praises unto the king uh, for when you sing, uh, I dwell among you. Uh, I don't know about you, church, uh, but I want to be in a continuous state, uh, a continuous mindset, uh, a continuous place in my life uh, where God feels to dwell amongst me. Uh, and I'm here to tell you, uh, the, uh, the Bible tells us that when we praise him, he uh, dwells amongst his people. Hallelujah. Well, why do we sit here quiet? Why do we let our mouths become idle when we, if we'll realize how important it is to praise God? The truth behind our, uh, our weapon of praise is when we begin to praise, things begin to happen. But how many are tired of not seeing things begin to happen? How many are tired of being going through a storm and wondering if Jesus is saying, where is your faith? Some Somebody needs to just begin to sing praises. For when you begin to sing praises, uh, your faith is built up. Uh, and when your faith is built up, uh, you can say, peace be to the storm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to understand what, what our praise really does. I've wrote, uh, I've written down just a few scriptures. Psalms 22 and 3 it says, but Thou art holy, O thou that inhabit the praise of Israel. Psalms 9, 9 through 11 says the Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know the name will be put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing praises to the Lord which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. I, I think, I think the that one of the problems in that scripture is the part uh, that it said put their trust in thee. Talked about that this morning. Talked about one of the problems is, is I, I probably should have kept my door up here, but a problem is, is that when you, when you know the Lord is knocking at your door, and he's knocking at your door, he's not going to force his way in there, but he's knocking at your door, a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll open the door, but because of the shame, because of, uh, of them being embarrassed of what they have in the door or in their house, uh, they step outside the door and they shut the door because they don't trust that Jesus can come in and clean up the mess that's on the inside. Uh, they got this mindset that they can clean it up themselves. Uh, but I'm here to tell you something. I've seen it over and over again. Even uh, an example of it myself. Myself, uh, that we, even though I thought I could clean it up myself, Brother Tim, uh, I couldn't. I realized uh, I couldn't clean it up on myself, uh, but I realized when I let Jesus in and I trusted him uh, that he would help me all along the way, uh, he was able to come in and clean it all up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We got we to gotta come to, we, to, to, to begin to realize the weapon of praise, to begin to realize, uh, hallelujah, the truth of praise. We must trust the Lord. You cannot truly praise the Lord unless you trust the Lord. Come on, somebody. Because you cannot come to a, a complete state of worship unless you have first trusted in the Lord. Because to come to a complete state of worship, you have to come to a vulnerable state in your mind. If you do not trust the Lord, then you will not go to a vulnerable state in your mind or in your heart because you're ashamed of that or you're fearful of that or you have anxiety of that. How many could admit to yourselves you have a heart 
time letting people come in uh, because you've got you, you, you deal with those things you feel uncomfortable it's hard to be vulnerable because you don't want to be broken uh, you don't want to be hurt anymore uh, but I'm here to tell you something uh, you can let Jesus come in uh, you can trust him uh, he knows how to ease your heart uh, he knows how to mend the broken heart uh, he knows the words to say that you need to hear uh, for fuel for for feeding your soul uh, and helping you come up out of whatever you're dealing with hallelujah he knows how to to ease uh, or, or or how to take care of that vulnerability that you trust him with he knows how to take care of that. He's not going to, when you become vulnerable to him and you open yourself up to him, he is not going to go in there and just, just start messing things up. He's not going to start moving things too fast. or or do He knows you're being vulnerable and he cares about you and he loves you. And so he's going to go in there to heal you and to love you and to help you. Come on, somebody. Why do we get to a place where we don't trust the Lord? Hallelujah. Why do we get to a place where we don't trust the Lord? But we say with our words, Lord, I trust you, I love you. But really deep down inside, we've still kept the door shut and God's saying, I want, to, I want to bless you. I want to help you. I have the answer to your problem. I have the, the, the antidote to your sickness. But you've got to let me in. You've got to trust me. And I believe that right there is the beginning of your praise breakthrough right there. When you trust the Lord and you open up your heart to Him, there is a praise that comes inside of you that no one can show shut up uh, that the enemy tucks his tail and runs uh, I'm here to tell you something uh, when you begin to trust the Lord uh, a praise will come out of you uh, and you watch the enemy's uh, trickeries and devices begin to fail in front of your eyes oh hallelujah let us have a mindset of worship. Let us have a mindset of praise. For if my mind is on praise, then my mind is on God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us come to a place where we let God dwell in us and with us. From the very moment, from the very beginning of time, God made an atmosphere of praise. God created a worship mindset or worship uh, uh, atmosphere in the garden. We know that because we hear the word tells us that he would walk with Adam in the cool of the day. I don't know about you, but it's something about being in a, pri a praise mindset. When you wake up or you go out onto your front porch and it is humid, it all is all get out, but you begin to praise the Lord, it's like a cool wind just begins to flow. It just begins to move at the right time. When I was a kid, I would go out to the woods mom and dad have about two acres uh, and I'd go out there and there'd be some fallen trees uh, and I know it was probably dangerous but I would go out there and I'd crawl up on those trees uh, and I'd hang my legs off the trunk of the tree uh, and I'd sit there and I'd just begin to praise God and just talk to God and just love on God and just commune with him uh, and it seemed like brother Marty every time that I would begin to talk to God uh, that it might have been a steel uh, just a still atmosphere the wind would begin to blow at a certain time and I could just feel brother Scotty God sitting right there on the trunk of tree with me talking with me communing with me from the very beginning people God created a worship mindset worship atmosphere so that we could commune with each other walk with each other talk with each other come on somebody Praise the Lord. But, but somewhere along the line, uh, we, we get so focused in life before us. You know what? If we would have a praise mindset, things would be more ordered in our life. You say, well, brother, I don't know what you're talking about there. If we had a praise mindset where we begin to praise God, 
before we start our day, if we would, this is my, I prayer for me, God, every morning. Lord, let it not be just a Sunday praise. Come on, somebody. Let it not just be for Sunday worship. Let it not just be for Sunday that I come to you and I kneel before you and lift up my, my praise to you. Let it not just be on Sunday that I lift my hands and I sing praises unto you. But let it be every day of my life before I see you face to face. Uh, I'm here to tell you something. You're going to do it for eternity. Uh, why not learn how to do it real good now? Hallelujah. When we can actually use it for a weapon. Uh, when we get to heaven, we're going to be doing it because we're in the glorious amazement and atmosphere of God. We're in his presence. Uh, it's not a weapon then. Uh, but when we're down here, God has said uh, when you begin to lift up prayer I come down and I dwell among you and when I'm there all the enemy scatters hallelujah it's it's literally given to us as a weapon while we're here on earth let's use it let's use it we get into the church and you can hardly worship leader can hardly get you to lift your hands hmm We get into church and we find ourselves comfortable in the, ch the chairs. We find ourselves comfortable where we're at. We come to prayer meeting. Come on, somebody. I know this is hard, but you listen to me. We come to prayer meeting. Instead of praying and lifting our voice to God, we have conversation with our brother and sister. I'm here to tell you something. We need to get our mind on God. We need to be lifting up our praise to him. We need to be lifting our voices to him. He is the answer. He is the final. Hallelujah. And when we get our focus on him and get our focus right, uh, things will continue to work through. I'm here to tell you something. As pastor, as a, a brother of this family, I want to say I don't want to stop seeing what God is doing in this church. Uh, and I know that if we silent our praise, uh, if we stand still and do not continue seeking the face of God, uh, then we will silence uh, or we will stop uh, what God is doing. Uh, because God dwells in the praise of his people don't silence your praise hallelujah mm, hallelujah Lord Jesus that we the people of God the Jewish people the Israelites realized how important it was to praise God they knew just how important it was that they made themselves all ordered. They put themselves, they knew that if they didn't have one stone in place, if they didn't have one ephod straightened up in place, if they did, come on somebody, if they didn't have their shoes on, if they didn't have their robe tied, if they didn't have themselves put together, they dare not enter into the temple of God because they realized just how important the praise was. They realized just how important it was to put themselves together before they come into the presence of God. And I'm here to tell you, he is the same God today, yesterday, and forever. He's calling for a holy people that is putting themselves together every single day and preparing themselves and getting ready to worship the Lord and preparing and praise so that he dwells with them every single day of their life. Because he knows at the moment, at the moment we silent our trumpet, at the moment we set our trumpet down, Oh, come on, somebody. Do we see in the text that I just read uh, about Gideon? Uh, if Gideon had not followed the plan of God to a T, uh, do you really think uh, that God would have honored it? Uh, but because of God being obedient, uh, come on, somebody, because of Gideon being obedient to the command of God uh, and doing exactly what he did, he could have easily, and in fact, he might have he actually said, Lord, uh, uh, the, why would you take all all these men away uh, he went from so many men down to 300 men uh, and anybody would have said you're uh, you're foolish uh, and this is crazy uh, you're going to get yourself killed uh, but because of obeying 
the word of God uh, and listening to what he told him to do uh, and taking out with no sword, no shield. He prepared himself in praise uh, and walked out on a battlefield uh, with a trumpet uh, and a picture and a light. Uh, you need to realize uh, that when you lift up uh, your trumpet and begin to pray, play, uh, that is the light of this dark world. Uh, this world needs to hear a praise of God to see the enemy's camp crumble. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Mm. Jesus. Don't silence your praise. Don't be quiet. Don't let the enemy come in there and control your mouth. The enemy wants you to stay asleep because he knows how important your praise is. The enemy wants you to stay asleep because he knows that God is coming back. The enemy wants you to stay asleep because he knows uh, that the kingdom of God is at hand. And if we begin to open up our mouths and we begin to proclaim the gospel and proclaim the word of God and we start singing praises, uh, it's going to get the hearts. Uh, it's going to prick the hearts of man. Uh, it's going to get the attention of those that are lost. Uh, and he knows that if he uh, doesn't keep us asleep, uh, it's going to spread like a wildfire uh, and people are going to say, uh, I want that. That song, I, I want that. It, it gets their attention. Uh, they want what you're singing about. Uh, they don't know why. They don't understand. Uh, but it's a catchy tune. It's better than any catchy tune of this world. Uh, and the, of this world's talking about sex and talking about drugs and alcohol and how you can kill yourself quickly. Uh, but the glory of Lord uh, and the praise of His people is about living life uh, and life to its fullest uh, and enjoying in the presence of God and basking in the presence of God and the promises and blessings of God I, why would we want to open our mouth for this world but let's be instruments of God the kingdom of God is at hand sing about it Hallelujah. Jesus help us realize how important our praise really is I'm going to tell you something. We know all these stories. But it was because of the praise of Elijah. Elijah understood what praise really meant. And as he began to... Listen, praise is not just singing. Praise is finding yourself on your knees before the Lord. Praise is testifying of his goodness. Anything that glorifies the Lord is praising the Lord. It's not just in song, but it's in your faith. When you exercise your faith and you begin to do things that, 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 that are touching to other people and, and you begin to exercise your faith and begin to prophesy things and, and you begin to edify the church, when you begin to do that, that is praise unto God. Anything that glorifies God is praise to God. Hallelujah. So as we begin to move and as we begin to operate, when you praise the Lord, hallelujah, this is, this, this is my prayer, hallelujah. This is my prayer. God, just like you said to Peter, James, and John, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You know why? Because when we praise the Lord, come on somebody. When we begin to lift up praise in our works, when we begin to lift up praise at church, when we begin to lift up praise in our home, when we begin to lift up praise at our families or or outside our family. Hallelujah. Things begin to take place uh, and we're glorifying God. Uh, hallelujah. And the enemy be scattered. Praise the Lord. I'm here to tell you something. Uh, we need to praise the Lord. Whew. 
the truth behind praise. The truth behind We say this before I get to that. Elijah praised God and the rains fell. He found the posture of praise. Why do you think God said, let my house be called the house of prayer? Because when we praise God in prayer, when we praise, anything we do glorifies God. So when I say praise, I mean prayer. When we praise God, he dwells with his people. He inhabits the praise of his people. He shows up when you start talking about him. He said, let my house be called a house of prayer because he realized that he knows just how powerful prayer is. He knows how powerful praise is. And when we get the mind, when we start to understand how important or how strong or what these things really are, that they are weapons, then we will start winning battles in our life. But not only that, you know, and, and, and another example, we can think of Paul and Silas. We can think of the disciples that were praying for Peter when pre Peter was imprisoned. As they began to pray and lift up their voices to God, Peter come knocking on their door. We're seeing things like that take place right now in abundant life. As we begin to pray and we come together, that's the key right there. As we begin to pray and come together in one of mine, in one accord, agreeing upon anything, the Bible says whatever we agree upon, laying our hands upon it, agreeing over one thing, that it shall come to pass. Because it's something about people who lift up their voice. We see things take place. God's waiting on us people. God's waiting to listen, to hear his people start calling on him start reminding him of his scriptures it's not that God has forgotten them but he's waiting to hear a people rehearse them he's waiting for a people to begin to speak those promises and claim those promises because they knowing how important they truly are Jesus Paul and Silas would begin to praise God and sing about his goodness <laughs> in the midst of their prison. In the midst of the darkest of dark in that time. They were in the innermost prison. In pitch black amongst the rodents and nastiness. They could have just drown themselves in all of that but instead they praise God and prison doors opened up and they saved a life that night that's what I'm that's what I'm coming to that, that's what I'm trying to get at right here do you realize do you understand that the truth of the weapon of praise is to create unity. When you begin to sing praises as they lifted their voice in Acts chapter 2 and cloven tongues of fire appeared above their heads and they began to speak as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Other tongues of other nations. People began to come from all over saying, I hear my tongue. What did they say they were saying? They're saying it talking about the glories of God. The mysteries of God. What do you think praise is? It's glorified. God, when you begin to glorify God, other people cannot help but take notice to it. When you begin to praise God, it comes, it becomes if effective, or it becomes what I'm trying to. It spreads amongst the people, and they can't help but want to sing along and begin to praise God. And what we don't realize is when one person sang, battles were taking place and being. 
one. But when more people start showing up, warfare is taking place and it's begun one. Hallelujah. If we would realize that the truth behind our praise is unity, when we would come together and lift up praise, I don't know about you, but I don't want to come to church and be the only one praising. I don't want to just win battles. I want to win wars. Second Corinthians chapter 13 and 11 and I'm coming to an end says finally brothers brethren rejoice aim for restoration somebody say that right there restoration hallelujah somebody needs restoration and if you don't need it I can promise you your brother needs it your sister needs it we need restoration he said aim for restoration comfort one another uh, agree with one another oh my goodness that right there just messed us all up because we can't come in agreement uh, but I'm here to tell you something uh, the word of God says live in peace uh, and the God of love and peace will be with you uh, but if we can't agree with each other if we can't work in harmony uh, then God says uh, he won't be in it uh, for when we begin to praise God uh, in unison uh, and in unity, uh, God begins to show up. Uh, church, let's come together in agreement to be in the presence of God together and work for the kingdom of God while his day. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 1 and 10 says, I appeal to you as Sister Christie comes. Brothers, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there be no division among you, but that you be in unity or be united in the same mind and the same judgment. What are you saying, Brother Dwayne? I'm saying we had a battle tonight. I'm saying when we come to church, we came tired and exhausted. And I need to ask you this question. If you was to put armor on and you ran out in the battlefield tired and exhausted, where would you end up? Hear my heart today. If you put your armor on and you put your sword in your hand, and you put your shield on your other arm and you ran out do you not think that the boys and soldiers that are fighting for our freedom don't find a moment of exhaustion but what do they do they press on they keep on keeping on because they know at the moment they give up they're dead And we wonder why we find ourselves spiritually dead. We wonder why we find ourselves in wildernesses. God didn't call us to a wilderness. He called us to a promised land. Take up your sword. Take up your helmet, your armor, your shield and go out in the battlefield if you are limping don't let the enemy know it if you're exhausted find strength in you you say brother Dwayne you're preaching way too hard I'm preaching the truth right now we got too many Christians who are dying in the field and it's because they come to a moment they gave up in that battle prepare to fight you say brother Dwayne how do I fight with your praise when a decree was put against him and I say him for a reason the enemy went against Daniel to shut him up 
And Daniel could have easily said, I'll be quiet until this thing blows over. But Daniel knew the importance of prayer. Daniel knew that if he grew silent for even a moment, Brother Scotty, that the enemy would come in like a rampage and take over the kingdom that God was setting up. He knew just how important his praise was. So even though his life was in jeopardy, he said, I will praise the Lord every day of my life. I will not only praise, but three times a day, I will stand, I will kneel before my window where everybody can see me. I will kneel before my window. I will kneel before my God and I will lift up my prayers even though I know my life will be taken from me. I will praise the Lord. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we will not praise your idol because we praise God. And we know he will deliver us. But even if he doesn't, we're still praising him only. the saints of God where is the soldiers that are armed and ready where are the people of God who says with everything in me whether I'm tired whether I'm going through a hard situation whether I don't know what my next step is or not or whether I'm sick I will praise the Lord all the days of my life with everything that is in me praise his name where are those people at? Where are those people at? Because I'm here to tell you, those people are the ones that are going to leave this building uh, on fire for God. Uh, when they come in, they will not leave the same. Uh, when they come in, uh, God gets a hold of them. Uh, he blesses them. Uh, he gives them what they were looking for. Uh, and they go out into this world uh, and they become a light uh, and salt in this lost and dying world. God is coming back. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords he is coming and now it is high time at the very moment he's going to be here rise up rise up people of God begin to sing begin to lift your voices begin to praise God and see the enemy fall before you Silent not your voices, but take your trumpet, put it to your mouth, and begin to praise the name of the Lord. And watch your situations change. Watch them change. I wonder tonight how many people would say, I've got to get my trumpet polished. I've got to get my equipment back out uh, and get it prepared uh, because from this day on uh, I am praising the Lord. How many would say uh, I got to polish some of my instruments tonight? Uh, if that's you, uh, find a place to pray tonight. Uh, seek the face of God. Ask Him to let your voice uh, lift up uh, out of slumber and begin to praise the Lord tonight. Take your steps of praise tonight. Come on, as Sister Christie leads us home.
him in the storm sometimes I remember one time in the Bible God told told him said I want you to send out the praisers first before you send out any troop any soldier any army and encampment send out the praisers there's a lesson to be learned there we can praise him praise him and there's victory in praise victory in praise I told somebody the other day when somebody called me and was talked to me about some difficulties they were having in life and I didn't take them very I didn't take them as if they were light difficulties they were big difficulties to them and I understood that and uh, but I told him I said what I want you to do I want you to try something 
I want you to get you a good song. And I want you to get it in your head and get it in your heart and get it in your mind. And when the devil begins to come against you with those thoughts and those things that trouble you, I want you to start praising God in that song. Start singing to him. Start worshiping and see if the enemy doesn't flee. And he said, I'll tell you what, I'll give that a try. Amen. How many knows that it'll happen? God will work. Amen. God will work. I'll tell you what God will do. Not only will God work on that end, but God will work on you too. Amen. Because God will prepare you and make you better instead of bitter. Amen. He'll make you better. Amen. Such a wonderful weekend this weekend. I think we probably <clears throat> broke our normal average attendance this morning. I'm talking about just a normal attendance. And uh, um, if everybody would have been here, we'd had to pull out chairs. Because uh, I think there's 70 chairs or maybe 75 chairs in this building. And uh, there were 60... 64, 68 in attendance this morning, and we started counting those that wasn't here uh, today for different reasons. If they would have been here, uh, we would have brought out chairs, and uh, that is a good thing. That is a good thing, and uh, so I uh, want you to work hard uh, telling somebody about the Lord, uh, Sister um, Alicia just met somebody on Facebook and uh, and invited them to church. Not only did that lady come, but she brought her whole family with her. Amen. And showed up this morning to church. And, uh, and I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. That's how it happens, folks. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you something that you may not know. Okay? Don't you hear me? Sheep bear sheep. Not shepherd bear sheep. Sheep bear sheep. It's the shepherd's job to take care of the sheep. But it's sheep that brings other sheep in. Okay? And uh, so uh, I, I know a pastor that made that statement and really got in trouble from his church. Well, I ain't really scared about it because it's fact. It's fact. And, uh, you know, uh, after 30-something years of pastor, and he just kind of rolls off my back like water. It don't bother me no more, but... But uh, but just it all takes some time is just an invitation. Yeah. Somebody might have been just you know at that moment just just been right moment, right time, right opportunity. And I'm gonna tell you something this morning. Sister Alicia was looking for them. She didn't tell me. She told me that she invited somebody to come, and they told her that's gonna come. But I watched her. She kept looking toward that door. She kept. Did anybody else notice it? She kept looking. So you know what she come? She come with expectation that not only did I invite them, they're coming. They're coming. And they come, and she was one of the first ones that went back and, and met them and greeted them. Speaking of that, um, I need, I need y'all, every one of y'all, it's your convenience. Don't, don't uh, ignore this, please. But she needs everybody's address. Sister Alicia needs everybody's address, okay? And she's asked for it for a reason. And uh, not that she's going to be bringing money by your house or nothing like that. But she wants to work in ministry as reaching out to those that miss service. And maybe a new person comes, we give her a visitor card. She reaches out to them with a letter saying, we're glad to have you in church. We used to do that a lot in church. But that's, that's that ministry been dropped. But she wants to pick that up. So um, y'all just write your write your name down on something, an address, and get it to Sister Alicia, would you please? And uh, go go get one and fill it out and hand it to her. And uh, for who? We did not have special prayer for her this morning. I agree. I agree. 